When I moved into Casper Pygmy Forest adjacent to Jackson State Forest in 1970, Jackson State Demonstration State Forest was being heavily logged. The Department of Forestry claimed at that time that their aim was a demonstration, multiple use forest. But near as I could tell, the multiple uses were logging, logging, and more logging. Recreation or the health of the forest was not high on their priority list. And after the initial massive clear cutting of the huge original virgin trees that were present in the 1800s, the second and third cuts left the forest a ghostly shadow of its former grandeur. Very little thought was given for sustainability or recreation let alone the fact that this biosphere was providing oxygen, storing carbon, and providing a habitat for thousands of species. No thought was given to the wealth and diversity of plants inhabiting the forest floor. The forest was strictly viewed as a commodity. To really comprehend the logging in Jackson Forest, we decided to map the past and present THPs. These are the completed timber harvest plans that have been logged over the past 25 years. These are the plans currently approved and ongoing. Casper 500, Redtail, and Soda Gulch are all scheduled to begin in spring of 2021. Currently under review are the Little North Fork Big River Plan, the Mitchell Creek Plan, the Jug Handle, Berry Gulch, and Railroad Gulch Plans. Rumored to be planned for logging, but not yet confirmed, is Manly Gulch. That is nearly half of the forest logged in a 25-year time period. This is the logging that has occurred in the surrounding area over the same time period, showing just how heavily impacted the entire region is. Right now we're standing in the middle of the Casper 500 Timber Harvest Plan. It is 500 or so acres, and it is going to be sold for $1,700,000, which is not a lot of money. That gives whoever buys it the rights to harvest the timber that's on it, including this tree here. This tree is larger than most of the trees that are striped for cut and is probably small old growth. And the management plan specifically states that no old growth trees will be cut. This forest is managed by Cal Fire, and Cal Fire has the mixed mandate of fighting fires, which they do really well, and managing a state forest, which we don't believe they do very well, and reviewing timber harvest plans statewide on any private or public land that's not federal. So what they're doing is essentially writing a timber harvest plan and submitting it to themselves. And then they auction the plan off to a licensed timber operator who logs it and oftentimes leaves problems. They leave a mess and they leave a lot of slash that gets dried out in the sun. And that's one of the things that is a great fire danger. We absolutely do know that fire going through a moist forest with large trees burns up the shrubs, burns up the small little trees, but it's the thick barked older trees that survive. Well, if you take everything out of here that's not redwood, then you're going to create huge, huge open dry pockets. And you won't have uh, resilience of habitat for trees and refugia for other species. Because the remaining forests that make it possible for us to continue living on this planet are being wantonly cut down almost everywhere in the world, it is urgent for us to reassess what is most important to us, our children and grandchildren, and the immediate health of our planet. 
The impacts from these planned THPs will ripple through the surrounding environment and will further exacerbate the harm done to the rare plant and animal species that are endemic to this region. These trees are really some of the best carbon sequestering organisms on the planet. And right now, in times of climate change, it's just crucial that we save things like this to mitigate other things we're doing to our environment. Currently, there are vastly more people living here in Mendocino than 50 or even 10 years ago, and we have become a hot spot for tourism. Logging is not at all the top industry that it once was. The forest is so much more valuable than just a resource for profit from timber sales. This forest has multi-use trails. There are a few older trails that were built by the CCC in the 30s and 40s, but almost everything now is built and maintained by mountain bikers. And it is a great asset to our community. When I walk through here, I see tourists, I see bicyclists, I see hikers, and this place has become a retreat and a refuge for all of us here on the Mendocino Coast. We'll take a, a paradigm shift in trying to figure out how to keep this gem of Jackson State Forest as a working forest, as a forest where tourists can come, as a forest where locals can come and provide habitat value for animals and fungi. This area, which is one of the most recreated and beloved parts of the forest, is going to be shut down for anywhere from one to three years. It means we can't go here and we can't have the mountain bike races that we used to have and people who live half a mile away and walk their dogs every morning can't come here anymore. No longer a place for our physical, mental, and spiritual health. So what we would like to see is the western third of the forest, between 15,000 and 20,000 acres, are completely managed differently. It would be called the Mendocino Coast Redwood Forest Reserve, with the primary mandate being education and non-motorized recreation and true demonstration science for climate change mitigation and wildfire resiliency. We are all in this together. We have to keep communications open and remain engaged with everyone involved in the ongoing evolution of forest policy and practices. It is so important, now more than any time in history, that we all work cooperatively find common ground, and keep our fragile forests healthy. Thank you.